welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of a mother of perpetual health. Redemptorists, their friends and devotees of Our Lady are happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. Let us for a moment open our minds and hearts in contemplation of this ancient picture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom we call our mother of perpetual help. See on this mother's face a quiet and sad expression. Having long ago given her yes to God to be the mother of God's son, she is now experiencing the cost of her yes, much as we sometimes have to count the cost in our daily lives of being followers of Jesus' teachings. She holds the child firmly in her arms, wrapped in her veil of sacred blue. She gazes out at us, a message of graceful acceptance of both joy and difficulty that comes with a life that we have chosen and which has chosen us. Her path is our path. Step by step, we struggle to become steadfast in the ways of love, hope, and faith. Let us look at the angels, Michael and Gabriel, presenting to Mary the symbols of her son's passion, death, and resurrection. They are there in this painting to remind us that no tragedy or loss in our life is ever without a redeeming grace. Sometimes this message will come to us quickly. Sometimes we may have to wait in patience until all is right and we are all one with Jesus in heaven. See the child's sandal hanging loose yet still attached. Our life here on earth is fragile and precarious. But like Jesus here, we trust that we are always held firmly in the grasp of the one who loves us, even before our life began. Let us look at the star in Mary's veil, recalling the star that led the Magi, also known as the Three Wise Men, to find Jesus, and another star that led them to safety away from Bethlehem. Mary, our mother, is our star, leading us always to Jesus and keeping us safely in His presence as we go on our way through life. And let us recall in our own time the powerful words about Mary from Vatican II. By her motherly love, she cares for her sons, sisters, and brothers who will journey on earth, surrounded by dangers and difficulties and they are led into their blessed home. I moved to St. Joseph Parish in Grand Prairie in the fall of 2005. 
There I was deeply moved by the spirit of love and hospitality I found in this community. After a long bus journey of just over 2.4 thousand miles from Mississauga, Ontario to this remote city in northern Alberta, I wasn't sure what God would make of me here. Prior to leaving, I had just returned to attending the Catholic Church regularly. I had been a part of a Pentecostal church with some friends I had met during my years of study in college. But it was the deep hunger for the Eucharist that brought me home. But there were still a lot of questions I had about my own faith. My hunger for the Eucharist brought me to daily Mass, which was totally new and exciting for me. I could receive communion every day if my work schedule allowed. On Wednesdays, the community of Redemptorists would share with us their devotion to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Mother of Perpetual Help, your very name inspires. This is a special Mass every week dedicated in honor and veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There would be a special set of prayers we would pray before her beautiful icon, as well as homilies, group sharing, and discussions about the rich symbolic meaning embedded within the painting. Since my understanding of the Virgin Mary was very limited at the time, I became troubled within about such a devotion. Why do Catholics pray before Mary? What does Jesus feel about this? The more I read about the spirituality behind the mother and her son, how the mother leads us always back to her son, the more the Mass began to open up to me in a new way. I could experience how the devotions before a mother of perpetual help could draw me closer to Jesus and his presence in the Eucharist. I could feel the love of the Eucharist and the liturgy of the Mass growing within me. One of my favorite representations of our Holy Mother is Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant. We know that the Ark of the Old Covenant contained the stoled tablets of the Ten Commandments. Manna, bread from heaven, given to the Israelites while in the wilderness, and the rod of Aaron, which resprouted and came back to life. The Catholic Church teaches that Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant because her womb contained Jesus Christ, who is the living Word of God, the bread of life, and the ruler who also came back to life. So now it is our Holy Mother Mary I turn to before Mass to help me receive Jesus more, present in the Holy Eucharist. She who loves to draw us continually closer to her Son helps me to be more fully nourished in my pilgrim journey. I always go back to my earlier days here at St. Joseph's Parish in Grand Prairie. Some of the first daily Masses that I had attended were chanted by our pastor at the time who liked music like myself. I can still remember hearing the Hail Mary sung prayerfully while we prepared for Mass and how profoundly that melody resonated a chord within me. Hail Mary, full of grace. St. Augustine, a great father of the church, teaches, He who sings prays twice. I now sing and teach this song to my children while putting them to sleep at night so that they may learn from within their hearts a deep love and respect for the Blessed Virgin Mary and that she may wrap and hold them close under her holy mantle. Mother of Perpetual Help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord, Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, 
knowledge and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the Word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your Son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health, and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins, obtained for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen.
In this series of talks, I am focusing on my appreciation of how Pope Francis shares the gospel message, how he makes people smile as they think about spiritual issues. He makes us listen as he gives us very serious gospel-rooted challenges. Since we are all called through baptism to share the gospel message with others, we can learn from Pope Francis's style and then apply what we learn in our own life. In this particular talk, I will focus on one aspect of Pope Francis's style, taking risks. When a person is named Pope, they find themselves suddenly in the public eye and people are listening to everything that they say and watching everything that they do and drawing conclusions from that. This could make a Pope become extremely cautious for fear of being misunderstood and criticized. Plus, with the papacy, there comes a long tradition on how a Pope does things in the public arena. But we can clearly see from Pope Francis's actions that he is a person who is willing to take risks, to move in directions that in the public eye are way out of the ordinary. This risk-taking began from the very moment he stood out on the balcony after being named Pope. He did not give his first blessing right away, but first asked the crowd to pray for him. He did not use the usual platform that would elevate him above others on the balcony, but said, I will stay down here. With these very simple actions, he was sending a message that could be easily understood by all who saw him. Pope Francis was telling us that we are all in this together, living our lives and struggling with spiritual issues, that we need each other, that we need to respect each other, and we need to pray for each other. He could easily have said these things, but by his use of symbolic actions, he spoke in an even more powerful way. Pope Francis's risk-taking continues. When he establishes various advisory groups to deal with countless Vatican issues, it was a risk when he walks to the back of the plane, when he travels to speak with reporters, that is a risk. When he reaches out to leaders of other faith traditions, that is a risk. When he washed the feet of refugees on Holy Thursday, that was a risk. The Pope is taking risks through unusual actions to get us thinking as a church and as a society. His actions could be taken in many ways and upset numerous people, but the Pope sees the risk as necessary to promote the kingdom of God. Through the powerful use of symbols, the Pope allows us to hear what he is sharing about the gospel and at the same time, challenging us to think about the issues from a new perspective. Having then considered the ways that the Pope takes risks, we can ask a few questions. What is our attitude about the Pope taking risks? What is our attitude about risk-taking in our own life? Does the fear of being misunderstood affect the way we approach life? 
are there risk takers who we know and admire. May the Holy Spirit guide our thoughts and reflections on how to consider taking risks. May the Holy Spirit guide our thoughts and reflections on how best to take risks as we share the gospel message. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother of perpetual help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity and strength, and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, for Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people, success in their endeavors and courage to witness to their faith. To our elderly, vitality, security and contentment in their days. And to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can 
make you a check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to a website www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrists.tv I make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptors offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. So now following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I spent a lot of hours thinking about whether the Redemptorists or any kind of religious life, whether even the church was relevant. And not a week goes by that there isn't some encounter, some experience that reminds me that not only is this life relevant, but this church is still very much relevant. And the message of Christ is just as necessary today as it was in his own lifetime.